Good evening, everybody. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's a good night to die to yourself. Amen? <laughs> uh, you know, we are very blessed. You know, truth sets you free. But if you don't practice the truth and put it into practice, you won't be free. Amen. A lot of people know the truth, but they're not free. There's people that memorize the Bible, and they're still not free. Amen? So without putting things into practice, you cannot be free. That's what takes cooperation. You know, people are always saying, well, I'm saved by grace. That means I can't do nothing. Yeah, right. Or you don't have to do anything. That's a bunch of lies. You and I are saved by grace. The grace is the plan of God to escape. Grace is not an unmerited favor. You earn God's favor. Amen? Grace is a plan of God to escape. Escape what? The deception of the enemy and the wrath of God. If you're not willing to follow the grace of the plan, you're going to get snagged. Amen? Praise God. First John chapter 1. John chapter 1, sorry. Gospel of John. Let's try that one. Hallelujah. What a battle that's going on. Amen. It doesn't stop. You're in this world, and the battle will never stop until you leave it. <laughs> the day you give up your last breath in this realm, your fight's over. But until then, you're in a battle. Gospel of John, verse 1, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we see in the beginning, in the beginning of what? time in the beginning in other words what's he what's he actually talking about he says in the beginning was god in other words in the beginning before time was created amen does everybody get that in the beginning before time was created god was always before time was created eternal timeless so in the beginning before god even created time he was not only the Word, amen, it says that the Word was with God and the Word was God. That's the way he communicates with us and everything else. Things are spoken and words are released through him. It says he was in the beginning with God. In the beginning of what? In the beginning. Before time began. Amen. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Hmm. So again, in the beginning, in the beginning, before time was created, eternal timelessness, in the time span of creation, the life was the light of men. So in the time that God created, in the beginning and the end, in this time span, which we are in right now. Amen? He said he created the life, and he put a light in man, which was life. The creator of life and light shined in men in all darkness to separate what is of time and what is timeless. Is everybody okay? Okay, let's go to verse 10. It says that he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. And when he came to his own, his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those 
who believe in his name. Now, this word believe means to follow. Amen. Who followed him. Because there's a lot of people say they'll believe, but they don't follow. That means it makes them a liar. It says, verse 13, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of what? God. They were born of God. And the world became, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory to glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, which is his plan, and truth. Again, the creator of time and life came into the world of time. He was timeless. He dethroned himself from an eternal realm, put on flesh so he could cooperate in this realm. And when he put on flesh, he came into the world of time, and those of the time were in darkness. So I want you to grab something. Those who are bound by time are in darkness. They are blinded. They are deceived. They have been taken captive in their minds. He said, but, so, and they did not comprehend or understand the moment they didn't get it. Here was the timeless creator that's not bound by any time whatsoever, came into a realm that's bound by time to make a way of escape so people can come out of it. That's what we called darkness, but those who are of the light are not bound by time anymore. Now your flesh still is. Your flesh is of the world. But your spirit now is no longer of this world. It is timeless. That's what makes it call. That's why it's called eternal. If you've ever noticed when you slept, when you go to sleep, your body needs to re regenerate. Amen? But your spirit can go all over the place. Your spirit is timeless when you sleep. Many of us say, well, I don't remember my dreams. Sometimes it's, thank God you don't. Some of them are horror flicks. But they shouldn't be if you're really filled with the Spirit and you're a new creation. You know, especially when you're first coming out of the world. When you're first coming out of the world and God begins to make call you. See, you didn't choose to come out of the world. He chose you. There was a moment of timeless for me and you when we came, when we said yes. We accepted it. We accepted Jesus Christ, the rescuer, savior, to come out of this realm. Even though we're still in this realm, but we're not of this realm anymore. Because if we were still of this realm, we'd still be blinded and taken captive. Amen? There wouldn't be no relationship with God. And so all of this, what God is trying to bring us into a reality of a restoring our identity of who we are and what he's done for me and you. See, because so many people get so caught up in the entanglements in this world. They look for fulfillments of this world. More people spend more time of fulfillments in this world not realizing. See, the things that he says about this world, he says, don't love the world. Why? Because if you lose in the area of a battle, you become to darkness. Scales come back on your eyes. You become blinded again. And you're taken captive in your mind. And now you're lustful of the world. The things of the world. You're looking to be successful in business and everything else. And again, there's nothing wrong with it, but that's their priority. See, now all priority is out of order. When the priority of desire is out of order, then you're out of time. Does everybody get it? Wow, you're out of the timeless realm, and you're bound by time. So when you and I were born again, we were born out of time. In other words, you were rescued out of time. So that we can live a life not bound by time, but timeless. We are actually a timeless race. Does everybody understand? We are what? A timeless race. Hallelujah. We are born of God with all truth and a plan of escape. That's why the world doesn't understand us. You know why the world hates you? Because they're bound by time. 
the spirits that are in these individuals, they manifest hatred because they're bound by time. You know why? Because they're never going to get out of here. A demon can't repent. They're going to cook. So what they want to do is kill as many as possible and take them with them. Right now, what you're seeing all over the place, the exposure of those who are bound by time. They're manifesting. Amen? What did the word say? The devil has a short time left. <laughs> Why? Because he's never going to enter timeless. He'll never have the opportunity to enter the realm that is timeless. He will always be bound by time. And then he'll die in time. So what the enemy wants to do is trying to get you into sin because sin binds you to time. Rebellion binds you to time. Disobedience binds you to time. It's what brings bondages back on the individual. What does he say? I hate He's been, he freed us from bondage. Bondage of what? Bondage of time. Is everybody all right? Ephesians chapter 2. Everyone say... Oh, yes. There are emotional attachments can bind you to this realm big time. That's what the enemy's attempt is to do, is to keep you connected here. Ephesians 2 verse 1. Let's speak it together. He says, In you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Which is, bound, which is darkness, right? And it's bound by time. He says, according to the prince of the power of air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Is disobedience sin? Yes. Well, then it binds an individual to time. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Wow. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, bound by time, he made us alive together with Christ, and by grace, the plan that he's given for me you to escape, we've been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly, is a heavenly place a time or timeless place? Timeless. In Christ Jesus. That's why the word says, he who's in Christ is a what? New creation. Amen. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Why? Because you've just been born out of time. And brought and born into a timeless realm. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. Before what? Before time was created. That we should walk in them. So we see here that we are once children of wrath, children of darkness, children of time. Amen? But now we are children of the light, children of life, timeless. Even though your body is a bound to this place, amen, the dust will go back to dust. But your spirit will be released. But when we go home, we will have a timeless body. It's called glorified. Amen? John 3. You know, Paul the Apostle really grabbed hold of this. 
And of course, many of the apostles did. They grabbed hold of their reality. Now, you've got to remember, they didn't have a Bible. They were only led by the Spirit of God. Many of them were translated from one location to another. Well, you can't be translated from one location to another unless you're in a timeless realm. Amen? John 3, verse 16. Let's speak it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, what, believes in him should not perish but have, what, everlasting life. Now, what does believe mean? To follow. Right. Jesus went up to the fishermen, the disciples, and said what? He didn't say believe me. He said what? Follow me. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that he, that the world, world through him might be what? Saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. You know, when we were in a world, most of us were known as night creatures. Hello. We played all night long. And when the sun came up, we hid. Amen. Jesus came from a timeless realm of light, truth, and life into a realm of darkness, sin, and death. People were imprisoned by time here to set the captives free and arm them with timeless weapons. What? To defeat the darkness of time and escape its deception. Lies will keep you bound to this time if you believe them. Does everybody understand? Lies will keep you bound to this time. Because the Bible tells us no liar can enter the kingdom of God. So all of these people that are being lied to and believe it, they cannot make it home. Amen. John 8. Hallelujah. John 8, 42. Jesus said to him, if God were your father, you would love me. Is everybody with me? For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Why do you not comprehend what I'm saying? Because you're not able to listen or receive my words. You are of your father, the who? The devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you don't believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's word. Therefore, you are, do not hear because you are not of God. So, you know, step back and look at what's going on in the world. God's exposing those who are his and those who are not. Those who are bound by time and those who are not bound by time. Listen, he gives the invitation to everyone. Think about how many times you rejected the invitation to get rescued. How many times people have come across your path in your life. Amen. And you said, eh, not now. In other words, you weren't done playing yet. 
playing with hell. Look at how many people that didn't make it and died and went to hell. But you're not in this room tonight if you didn't accept the invitation. Now what are you going to do with it? Now are you going to keep it? Are you going to protect God's presence? See, when you and I praise and worship, we actually open up a portal to a timeless realm. When you're able to step into that place, everything goes. That's why when you're in that presence, there's no more. You're not bound by time. You're free. Why? Because the presence of God is not bound by time. That's how people get healed. Sicknesses of time. When you step into the timeless presence of God Almighty, boom, you're healed. You cross over to the other side, you're refreshed, everything is new. Feels like you just took a cold shower. Man, you got to awaken big time, you know. Yo! Just touch, put your finger in the sock and got a little Jesus buzz. But when you step into that realm, there's no more worry, there's no more fear, and there's no more goofy. Amen? Goofy's gone. Goofy mind. Praise God. <laughs> One of the things the enemy again I want to share is he wants to attach you emotionally. And you hear us talk about that all the time because emotions is a killer. Emotions. Fear is an emotion. Doubt's an emotion. Emotion. False fulfillment's emotion. People spend more time fulfilling their desire emotions than they do getting in God's presence and getting free. Hello? 1 John chapter 2. Remember, the enemy can only attack you from where? Your past. First John chapter 2, verse 3. Oh, hallelujah. So, the Bible says that if we accept all the promises of God, Amen. We are able to partake of the divine nature. Partaking of the divine nature allows me and you, because the divine nature, by the Spirit of God, binds to your spirit. Now, the divine nature is activated in you, you become timeless. Does everybody understand? So your thoughts are no longer untemporary. You're able to see things through. So no matter what's going on in your life, you're not bound by it. There's no fear. There's no worry. There's nothing to that degree. You know God's going to work it all out because you're not bound by time. You're timeless in a time-filled realm because you no longer belong here. In fact, you don't even fit here anymore. It's like putting a square into a round hole. You just don't fit no more. It just doesn't seem right anymore. In verse 3, is everybody there? 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Oh, hallelujah. Did I say verse 3? Verse, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Yeah, it will work. <laughs> now, by this we know that we know him if we what? Keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a what? Is a liar. Now, his commandments are not the Ten Commandments. Anything God speaks is a command. Amen? So all of his word is a command. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. And by this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but 
an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is what? Passing away, and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in what? Darkness. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not where he know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his what? Eyes. So they're bound by time. So we know that the ruler of this earth, who is Satan in his kingdom, has blinded individual, and by doing this through deception and lies, keeps them in a time in a place of time. They're bound. Everybody all right? He keep, you know, keeps saying that, they're, that people keep saying that they're in the light, but they're walking in darkness because they are the time and are blinded by the God of this age, Satan. But those that are living and following the true light are born out of time. So, in other words, we were born out of time because we were taken out of time. Now we're born in a timeless realm. And we are a race, a timeless race. And then we're born into a timeless race of eternal beings as the army of God. As the what? The army of God. In 1 Corinthians 15. Again, the coming out of the world and the attachments of the world is a process. Amen? And one of the things that has to be erased is your false identities of your life. We must begin to allow the Holy Spirit to erase those things in our life. While people have so many identities, they identify themselves in their abilities and talents and positions. They identify themselves as husbands and wives. They, that's their priority identity. But in Christ, we no longer identify ourselves. We are Christ. Our identity must be directly paralleled with him. He is the Christ and we are Christ. Amen? Why? Because we are the offspring of him. We are joined heirs with him. We are seated in blessed heavenly places. We are more than conquerors. He who is in us is greater than who he is in the world. All of these areas separate me and you from the world. But the world is going to attack you in every way they can. Every way. Why? Because the powers of darkness want to keep you bound by time because they know they can't escape it, and they never will. They may be unseen in the spirit realm, but that's not the timeless realm. That will still get destroyed. Amen? So even demons and demonic spirits and, and fallen angels, they will be destroyed also. Why? Because they're still bound by time. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. For I delivered to you first of all that which I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren where? All at one time, basically, is what he's saying. So he showed up at 500 people at one time. Why? Because he's timeless. Amen? What an advantage. Think about that. And we have that same advantage, not that we're going to show up in front, but we can reach all of that, that realm in the timeless realm. Why? You can just call destructive fire down in all kinds of places. You can ask God to dispatch your angels in all kinds of places. And you don't even have to be here. Amen? You don't even have to be there. Why? Because when you pray, you enter a timeless place. Your prayers are vital. And the moment you begin to skip prayers, time begins to start to grab hold of you. 
Because, see, your prayers are connected to the timeless realm. And after that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep or gone home. After that, he was seen by James and then by all the apostles. And then last of all, he was seen by me also as one born out of what? Due time. So in other words, he got freed from the realm of time. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. Paul was born out of the realm of time into a timeless realm or given, brought in, and birthed into a timeless race. Colossians chapter 1. You know, the word says some, uh, to the degree that not all things are lawful, you know, not all things are, you know. So, uh, again, we're to discern what's going to try to hurt us or damage us. It may not be sin, amen, but it still may bind us to time, even though it may seem good. But remember, there's a tree of the knowledge of good and what? Evil. So things have a deceptive arena of good, but can still bind you to time. Because even the, the word talks about there is sin unto death and sin not unto death. But sin, little leaven leavens the what? Whole lump. Amen. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for with all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, in other words, but from what? Time. And conveyed us into the kingdom of his Son, of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. He is before all things. And in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your what? Your minds, your thoughts. By wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through the death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If, 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 that means a place of cooperation. If you indeed, you continue in the faith. In other words, if you continue following, if you continue in obedience, if you continue getting in his presence, and you don't let any idols get in your way. If you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and are moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, have become a minister. Powerful. Partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Second Corinthians 5. Oh, happy days. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Remember, we are called to battle. 
Amen? Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue those who've been taken captive by time. And they've been taken captive by time because they've been taken captive by sin and lies. Look at how many people have been lied to. You know, but the Lord showed me many people who have voted for Biden, offspring of Satan, will repent for voting for them. They're going to turn around and come back to the Lord. There's a lot of Democrats who are coming out of that organization because it is corrupt and demonic. Same thing with the liberals and everything else. Why? Because there's, Christ is not promoted. Everything else, anything that's anti-Christ is not of God. Then it's promoting Satan's kingdom and his agenda. How can anybody vote for killing the unborn child? How can anybody promote perversion? It just doesn't work that way. That God doesn't promote those things, so why should we? Amen? Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. Let's speak it together for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be what? Clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. In other words, you, myself, and everyone else, there's a groan in us because our body is bound by time. But our spirit man's not. And it wants to be freed. Uh, come on, everybody in here wants to be freed. We thought we were free when we were doing our own free will. But we were actually in bondage then. I couldn't wait to get out of my family's house. I thought I was free. I thought I was free when I was a drug addict. Oh, I'm free to do whatever I want. Yes, to do all the sin I can. Yes, it's great. I had a great time for a short period of time. It never lasts. Nobody gets away with it. But when Christ came, I realized all the things I was looking for was him. And he paid for it all. I didn't have to buy dope no more, drink, nothing. I just had to get in his presence to get filled. That's why he's called the Most High. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the most high. Come on, give him glory. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't need to go get buzzed. You can get buzzed. Just lift your hands to heaven and get connected. Praise God. You don't need to do all that stuff no more. Glory to God. Come on, we used to go through great lengths to catch a buzz. People, you get upset when somebody got you out of your high. I mean, it's still happening today. You give somebody, Narcan, who just was over there overdosing on heroin, they come out, they're going, man, what'd you do that for? Well, you were dying, dummy. You were about to wake up in hell. Remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. But I've been a Christian 30 years. You couldn't have been. You're still doing the dope. Don't tell me you're a Christian if you're still following evilness and wickedness and drinking and party. You are not a Christian. You're a child of the devil until you choose to turn your ways and walk away from it. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Unless you can get a repentance in there for you. Hallelujah. That ain't easy, though. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? We need to lock the door? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's grow a little further. Verse 2 again. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, 
we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but what? Further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God the Father, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So the Spirit is the one that's always bringing you, connecting you. That's why he brings you to all truth. That's why we are to be baptized in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, connected. Why? Because you're always walking away from time. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, you show, to, show up for work and tell that you're bound. You know, I'm not bound by time. You're going to get fired. You, know, you, you just don't do that. You still have to obey according to the rules and whatever. But your spirit, man, is no longer bound by this world. But this is something that we must understand. So we are groaning to walk away from all of this. We are groaning to run away from all of this. Right into the presence. You no longer belong here. And until all of those desires are exchanged for, from the earth to heaven, homebound, you'll stay bound here. That's why the renewing, the conversion of your soul, your emotions, your desires, the way you think, all of that's got to be converted so that you connect with heaven and no longer connect with the world. Amen? Oh, snap. So we does, listen, when we get revelations and impartations, some of these are what we call a timeless moment. And what does it do? It reconnects you to the timeless realm. You have a visitation from the Lord in a dream or something to that degree? That's why the word says we're not to be lukewarm. We're to be what? Hot, on fire, wanting more, thirsty, th always thirsty and hungry for God's presence and his righteousness. And you connect by your mouth. Where you confess, Lord, you're my fulfillment. You're my love. You're my everything. I can't do nothing without you. Fill me, dress me, and possess me. Amen? Cut me loose from the bondages, the mindsets and strongholds. Cut me loose from the desires of this world. You have not because you ask not. Amen? Look at what happened to Moses. I mean, he saw a bush burning, but it wasn't really burning. Amen? And they, and they, they couldn't create this. This was God Almighty. And so then what happened when the Lord called Moses up to the mountain? He says, come on out. He, what was he doing? Coming out. When he called him to the bush, he said, take your shoes off. That's all about time. Come on in. I got something to share with you. When he went up to the mountain, Moses thought he was in there 15 minutes with God. He walked out. It was 40 days later. He didn't eat or drink. Didn't order dominoes. Nothing. He was not hungry. Nothing. Amen. He didn't even know he was in there 40 days. Heck, some of us have a hard time hanging out here for an hour and a half. But when you're in God's presence, if you broke through, it's cool. You're not bound by time. In fact, time goes very quick, just like it did with Moses. 40 days. 40 days, no food. Walked out of there. Wow, what happened? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? First John chapter 2. We're going back. John chapter 2. We are of a timeless race. Hallelujah. Verse 15, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? Passing away. And the lust of it. 
But he who does the will of God abides for what? Forever. How can, if you're doing the will of God and you abide forever, you can't be bound by time. Amen? Little children, it is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last day. So I want you to understand that many false prophets and false religions and doctrines of demons, these are entities that are trying to connect people back to this world and move them out of a timeless realm. And in hope if they die bound by time, they go to hell. That's how demons get rewarded. That's how the demonic realm works. The more bloodshed they can do through human, the more promotion they get. And these people that hold very wealthy positions, they must shed blood to hold their positions. There's a certain million dollar level that they get a hold. Verse 19. It says that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have what? Continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know what? All things. All things. Why? Because you're not bound by time anymore. You're able to see certain things. Man, you just have to get into prayer. Press in, pass over, get into the Spirit, and God will show you all kinds of things. He's not trying to withhold anything. He's trying to draw us. But there are so many things that are in the way sometimes. Idols. Idols are destroyers. You got to be careful who you associate with. Because some people carry some goofy doctrines. Hallelujah. Glory. Philippians 3. Now the word says, Some people are still serving themselves and trying to serve God. It ain't going to work. So he says, deny yourself. Philippians 3, verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? For Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. See, Paul reached this place of the things in Christ. He said, I had many revelations. I was brought up to the third heaven. I saw things. Why? He was not bound by time. He knew his flesh. In fact, he cried out to the Lord. If you recall, he said, Lord, you know, Satan's buffeted my, my flesh. Yeah, he's buffeted your flesh because your flesh is darkness. Amen? And the Lord said, listen, my grace is sufficient. Why? Because if I remove that problem from you, you dead. And then you'll be no good to me here on earth. He realized his flesh was nothing but a hindrance. Your flesh is a hindrance. That's why you must be led by the Spirit, filled by the Spirit, so your flesh stays crucified. Amen? Because it's always trying to mislead you. Hallelujah. And Paul came to the place and said, man, I realize that everything that I've gained of Christ Jesus, I'm willing to cut loose and never go back again. And be found in him, verse 9, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I do something. I press on that I may lay hold that which for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself is to apprehend but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things 
which are ahead. In other words, I'm living from the future to the present. That's what makes me timeless. When I allow the enemy to reconnect me to my past and the emotional attachments of my past, worries and fears and frustrations, I am beginning to lose timelessness and get bound by time again. And what happens then? You rely on yourself. And the next thing you're doing is trying to rescue yourself. In verse 14, I press forward toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let as many as are mature have this mind, have this thought pattern. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. 1 John chapter 5. Timeless race. Hallelujah. Remember, we've been rescued to battle. But so many times people lose sight. The first thing the enemy comes to try and do is steal your identity. Now your identity, if he can shift your identity to who you are in the physical compared to who you are in the spirit, that begins to drift. First John chapter 5, verse 18. Let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not, what? Does not sin. Why? Because he knows if he sins, he's going to get bound back into time. But he who has been born of God, what? Keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. Why does he keep himself? In the presence of God. A place of timelessness. We know that we are of God and the whole world is, lies under the sway of the wicked one. In other words, they're bound in the time with lies. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Idols. I'm going to close at Revelation 22. Hallelujah. Be encouraged tonight of who you are. And thank God you're not bound by time anymore. Even though you may have the aches and pains of time. Amen. <laughs> we still suffer the uh, time, you know, but we can walk out of it. That's why Jesus said, by his stripes we're healed. Amen. So he does make us a way of escape. Revelation 22, verse 12. Glory. 22, 12, everybody there? Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs. Now, what's a dog? A dog is a demonized individual. Outside are dogs and sorcerers. I mean, come on, really, God isn't concerned about the animal dogs, amen, out there. This is the kingdom of God, amen. <laughs> we got enough barking going on. Verse 15. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and idolatry. And whoever loves and practices a lie... I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. 
If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And everybody said, Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word and the reality of who we are in you. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound and restore to us our true first love and the desire and love for your presence. Expose the idols and the emotional attachments in our lives so that we may be cut loose from these things and walk in the fullness of who you are in us, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.